the Bible stands out not just as a historical record but as a unique tome unmatched by any other in your local library. It chronicles the inception of our planet to the prophesied end of days, a span no other text has dared to cover. This is largely because no one was there at the very beginning to record the dawn of our world in a credible manner. We, however, hold the exclusive insight into how the grand finale unfolds. This knowledge wasn't bestowed upon us merely to quench our curiosity. Rather, it's meant to arm us for what lies ahead, ensuring we're not caught off guard or lost in misinterpretation. It's a testament to Jesus' transparency that he shared insights about our future, prompting gratitude in us. The question of whether we're living in the end times surfaces frequently. According to the Bible, we've been in this era for over two millennia, starting with the significant events of Pentecost. It suggests that every generation of believers should live in anticipation of the Lord's return. Diving into the Bible reveals it as a repository of foresight, with 735 future-telling prophecies dispersed throughout its pages. A significant portion, 596 to be exact, have already come to pass, affirming their authenticity. This striking accuracy, especially for prophecies uttered centuries in advance, lends credence to the likelihood of the remaining prophecies unfolding with equal precision. The Bible has maintained a flawless track record for all prophecies eligible for fulfillment up to this point. Most of the pending prophecies deal with the return of Jesus and the events that will follow. Approximately 20 of these prophecies remain, and they are the ones we watch for with bated breath, preceding the Lord's much-anticipated return. Jesus urged us to stay vigilant and prayerful. But this doesn't mean idly scanning the skies. It's about being keen observers of worldly events and recognizing the signs he foretold. A prime example is in Matthew 24, where Jesus succinctly outlines these signs in response to his disciples' queries. In this passage, Jesus cautions against deception, speaks of widespread conflicts, natural disasters, and the persecution of believers, all of which serve as harbingers of what's to come. He emphasizes endurance, faithfulness, and the global proclamation of the gospel as key markers leading up to the culmination of this age. He also references a prophetic vision from Daniel, warning of profound desolation and urging those who witness these signs to take immediate action, highlighting the urgency and severity of these times. Jesus paints a vivid picture of the trials and tribulations that will precede the ultimate redemption, urging vigilance and steadfastness in the face of unprecedented challenges. For the sake of God's elect, the period of tribulation will be abbreviated. Jesus warned us about the emergence of false messiahs and prophets who will wield great wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the faithful. He cautioned us in advance guiding us to not be swayed by claims of the Messiah's secret appearances. The true arrival of the Son of Man will be as unmistakable as lightning that fills the sky from east to west. These deceptive tactics and tumultuous events serve as harbingers of the end times. The scripture foretells a time of unprecedented upheaval, where celestial bodies will be disrupted, heralding the imminent return of the Son of Man. This spectacle will bring profound sorrow across nations but it will also signal the gathering of God's chosen from every corner of the earth. The analogy of the fig tree teaches us to discern the signs of the times. Just as new leaves signal the approach of summer, these prophetic events indicate that his return is imminent. Despite the certainty of these signs, the exact timing remains known only to the Father, underscoring the importance of vigilance. Jesus highlighted several indicators of his coming, including widespread calamities and societal unrest. While such events have been part of human history, their intensifying nature suggests we are indeed in the midst of these prophesied times. However, Jesus' repeated caution against deception is pivotal, emphasizing the risk both within and outside the religious community. The mention of false messiahs exploiting crises to proclaim themselves as deliverers is particularly poignant. History is riddled with such figures, leading their followers to disastrous ends. Yet, these crises are not merely harbingers of doom but birth pangs of a new era. As believers, we are called to view these tumultuous times through a lens of hope and anticipation for the new world to come. While we empathize with those affected by these trials, we remain unshaken, buoyed by the promise of renewal. 
Jesus encourages us not to succumb to fear or despair, but to embrace these signs as precursors of a glorious dawn. The second harbinger of Christ's return shifts focus from global calamities to the state of the church itself. The first signal was marked by worldwide distress. The second is evidenced by significant shifts within the church. Jesus broke down the second sign into three distinct parts, all unfolding within the ecclesiastical community. Firstly, the church will face persecution, becoming a target of animosity globally. This leads to the second aspect, a dwindling of the church's ranks. The pressures of pervasive persecution will cause many to fall away, their fervor cooling in the face of adversity. It's a somber forecast, yet within it lies an unexpected turn. The gospel will reach every corner of the globe. Despite its reduced numbers, a refined church will make an unparalleled impact worldwide. A clear indication, as Jesus suggested, of the nearing end times. False prophets, with their soothing, yet misleading doctrines, pose a significant threat during these times, preaching peace when there is none and offering false reassurances. Jesus' counsel to persevere is crucial. Enduring faith is the path to salvation. As the world grows increasingly hostile towards Christians, their distinctiveness, rooted in their heavenly citizenship, becomes a beacon that, paradoxically, attracts persecution. The distress in Jerusalem represents the third sign, pointing to a very localized yet significant event foretold by the prophet Daniel, the abomination of desolation. This period will spotlight a figure of tyranny in God's city, setting the stage for the immediate onset of the final sign. This last sign is dramatic. The natural lights of the heavens will dim, making way for the Son of Man's radiant return. This cosmic blackout serves as a prelude to Christ's arrival, with the faithful meeting Him in the skies, an awe-inspiring prospect signaling the fulfillment of time. Jesus uses the simple parable of the fig tree to illustrate the imminence of these events. Just as the budding of the tree signals the approach of summer, so too do these signs indicate the nearness of His coming. It's a straightforward analogy, urging vigilance and readiness without delving into allegorical interpretations. In the tapestry of signs and seasons foretold, there exists a profound undercurrent of hope that often goes unspoken. Amidst the discussions of tribulations and trials, there lies a golden thread of redemption and renewal that weaves through the narrative of the end times. This aspect, the beacon of hope in the resurrection and the promise of a new creation, is a vital element that complements the signs of the times. As the Church navigates through the tumult of persecution and the challenge of false teachings, it's imperative to remember the core of our faith, the resurrection of Christ. This pivotal event not only assures us of victory over death, but also serves as the cornerstone of our hope for the future. Just as Christ rose from the grave, so too are we promised a resurrection into a new life, free from the pain and suffering that mark our current existence. Moreover, the concept of a new heaven and a new earth, as described in the Revelation, offers a vision of restoration that transcends the present turmoil. This new creation is not merely an escape from the world's woes but a transformation of reality as we know it. It's a place where righteousness dwells, where peace reigns supreme, and where God's presence is an unceasing source of joy and light. This promise of renewal is not just a distant dream but a present reality that shapes our lives and our actions. It empowers the Church to be agents of hope and healing in a world fraught with despair. Our mission, therefore, extends beyond mere survival through the end times. It encompasses the active participation in God's redemptive work, bringing glimpses of the new creation into the here and now. As we stand on the brink of change, watching for the signs and staying true to our calling, let us also embrace the role of peacemakers, of caretakers of creation, and of heralds of the good news. In doing so, we not only await the coming kingdom but actively partake in its unfolding story sowing seeds of hope that will bloom into the fullness of God's promise for humanity and the earth. This proactive engagement with the world, grounded in hope and anticipation of the new creation, prompts us to reflect on the nature of our witness in these times. The Church is called not just to endure but to illuminate the path for others, to be beacons of light in increasing darkness. Our actions, fueled by faith and hope, can offer solace and direction to those caught in the throes of despair 
guiding them towards the promise of something far greater than the present reality. In this context, the role of community becomes paramount. As signs unfold and the world grows more tumultuous, the Church's communal life stands as a testament to the Kingdom's values of love, unity, and mutual support. This communal witness serves as a powerful counter-narrative to the division and isolation that often characterize the end times. It is in the loving embrace of the community that individuals find strength to face persecution, resilience against false teachings, and comfort during times of global upheaval. Furthermore, the sacraments and rites of the Church take on a deeper significance in this period. Baptism and the Eucharist, for example, are not mere rituals but profound expressions of the hope we carry. Through baptism, we identify with Christ's death and resurrection, and in the Eucharist, we partake in the foretaste of the heavenly banquet. These acts of worship connect us to the eternal reality of God's kingdom, anchoring us in hope as we navigate the uncertainties of the end times. In addition to our communal and sacramental life, the Church is called to a ministry of reconciliation and restoration. This involves not only preaching the gospel of peace but actively working towards the healing of broken relationships, the restoration of justice, and the care for creation. Such efforts reflect our deep-seated belief in the coming new creation and our role as co-laborers with Christ in the work of renewal. In conclusion, as we discern the signs of the times and anticipate the return of Christ, let our hope in the resurrection and the promise of a new creation inspire us to live out our faith boldly and compassionately. Let us be a community that radiates hope, engages in meaningful acts of worship, and commits to the ministry of reconciliation and restoration. In doing so, we not only bear witness to the coming kingdom, but also participate in the unfolding of God's redemptive plan for the world. In wrapping up, let's reflect on a more personal note. Amidst these discussions of signs and times, consider the worship songs that draw you closer to God that remind you of His presence and promise in your life. What hymn or melody has touched your heart and bolstered your faith during challenging times?